mean, there was a huge motorcycle in the garage. I was like, you guys leaving that? <laughs> <laughs> I take that. That's a no. That's a no. I would not trust you on a motorcycle. I wouldn't trust me on a motorcycle. Well, no, it's just, it's one of those things where if you, if you're driving a motorcycle and your arms get tired, your knuckles will drag on the ground. You put those hands down. That's easy. I'll stop the bike faster. <laughs> I just drag my finger. <laughs> like the Hulk. Yeah, we're, we're going to be and have a little bit more uh, different scenic. Yeah, it is. Yeah, pay attention behind you. Uh, things are going to be a little bit more scenic. Which, things behind the defensive line this year are going to be a little bit different. Just a little bit. No. Not a silky segue? Hey, it's silky segue. It, all you have to do is put that subscribe now button. Nobody will notice. <laughs> All right, so tell me, tell me what you mean by that, because I guess, well, I, I guess I don't know what direction you're taking this. Well, this, I, this is this is purely hypothetical. Okay, there could be some things. Sorry, thanks for driving a Prius. I think it's a Yaris, smaller. It's a fucking Yaris. It is smaller. <laughs> so. I'm talking about in 2019, the Buffalo Bills, majority of the time, what they were doing was they were running nickel. They had main, mainly a two linebacker set mm -hmm. that they were running with Edmonds and, and Milano. Yeah, and a lot of people are going to counter that Zoe was out there a lot, but so, Zoe really wasn't playing a traditional linebacker role. He was not. He was mostly a guy that was putting his hand in the dirt, playing a defensive tackle. He wore a lot of hats, and they had to fill his roles, and we, all, we, we highlighted well what – Something some, the guys that were signed in order to fill Zoe's role. You know, we understand that. Now, if you look at the front wall of the of Buffalo Bills, they just kind of reloaded, you know, with, with Jefferson Butler, AJ. They got everybody up there. Now behind them, you start to look at your boy, Voshan Joseph. Mm -hmm. You start to look at is his name Dobson? Yep. Okay, you start to look at him. They pick up an AJ Klein. They take they pick up McKavich, who's mainly a special teams guy. I'm just saying. But you see a lot of guys that are kind of hybrids that can come down in the box. Right. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, that two linebacker set with the nickel, the common nickel that used to have, with the addition of, of Josh Norman, with the way, the, the way that Poyer and Hyde play well back there, and you got Tredavious White, obviously. That that may open up some things for the Buffalo Bills to play underneath that with the, with the linebacking core. They may be able to play a little bit more with, you, you insert a Joseph. You insert a, uh, uh, you know, Jaquan Johnson. You know what I mean? You have certain guys in there that could play multiple roles. It, not like a Zoe role, but a, they can play different roles. So you may not have just the traditional two linebacker set that they had like 70% of the time mm -hmm. last year. Right. So that's why I, said, I started out with behind it. May may look a little different in 2020 for the Bills to mix it up because, as you and I have stated many times, this team – this, especially on the defense, they've been together for 33, 34 games. Mm -hmm. You can find cracks in there if they continue to play the same style. Right. I think yeah. they just need to mix it up. Okay. So That's why I, I wanted I... Jeremy Chin. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted basically a sledgehammer with a helmet? <laughs> I right, wanted a sense. rover. I wanted to play 10 on 10 and let Chin go wherever you want. A rover? What is a softball? <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying. But I, I have to ask a question because we had this criticism of the offense, and I wonder if it's fair to say of the defense, right? Okay. So you're saying that, you know, if you put in Bo Shot, if you put in Jaquan Johnson with, with the personnel packages, oh my God, what is going on today? Like, is is it National Tim Hortons Day? It is. What? That's is not God's the one day? I usually go to. Well, I know we're gonna to go to the one that we used to record all our post game shows at. Oh my God, you remember that? Yeah, we show up in all. Guys, true story. We just walk into a Tim Hortons, do our post game, and just sit down and start recording and do our post games from Tim Hortons. Why did we do it? Because it was halfway between both our houses and it had free Wi-Fi. That's the sole reason why. But we did, it we did purchase coffees we and sure donuts, we so sure we weren't just you know loitering. We looked very strange. It was a strange look. I just remember the one we had to do it near your house. Mm -hmm. And the two ladies that were just eating donuts staring at us the entire time. 
<laughs> are you so guys um, recording stuff? Yeah, they're so fascinating. An iPad, not a camera, dear. Yeah, we were not high tech at all back then. We're still not. <laughs> yeah, not really. <laughs> we were critical of this on the offense, right? So is it fair to be critical of this on the defense? Yes. By changing up the personnel, doesn't that make them more predictable, right? So with, with Zoe, he could have... He could have stepped into any of those roles. He could have, he could have played on the defensive line, right? Yes. He could have played. He played D tackle. We saw him play D tackle. Okay. Could have lined up on the edge. Could have played the traditional linebacker role. So he was versatile enough that you could put him anywhere, and there was no way that you could look from a personnel package standpoint on the sidelines to know exactly where he was going to be. Yes. So with somebody like Beauchamp or Jaquan Johnson, doesn't isn't that kind of versatility removed? I'll give an example, right? So on the offense. We complained about Robert Foster's lack of involvement, right? And every time Foster walked onto the field, it was like the number four hitter walking in the game. We're like, back it up! Power hit! Pull! Pull! Get to the fence. Yeah, it's every time Foster every time Foster got on the field, they're like, nine! It's a nine! Nine route! But how does... So tell me why you think this personnel change is a good thing? Because if we're gonna if we're gonna be apples to apples, I see a I, I see a contradiction. I think you ignored my comment earlier <laughs> that a lot of the guys that we're talking about that we're mentioning. I know you probably don't feel the same way, which is probably why you made that that point. I I feel that this Tim Hortons is even more packed than the last one. What the hell? Uh, I feel this. Those guys are more multifaceted than I think you you because you just talk about Joseph going forward. You talk about him being a yeah. edge guy. Oh yeah, and that's what you love. That's his that's his that's greatest I, strength. That, right. However, I don't think it's his only strength. I think when you talk about Johnson, when you talk about Joseph, when you talk about all these other guys that are coming into the fold, um, uh, your your DB from Pitt. Oh, dude, not worth it. Not worth it. Your boy, your DB oh, from yeah. Pitt. Yeah, they, um, I Dane think Dane Jackson. Dane Jackson. I think because of the versatility that they possess. Now, there's one thing that they do really well. Mm. However, there are a bunch of things that they do well. Now, I know you're talking about like, okay, if Joseph is in the game, his strength is edge rushing. That's what he's going to do if he's coming in. If uh, Jaquan Johnson is in the game, he's kind of like. A, He's a hybrid of hiding boy or whatever, whatever you want to, whatever name you want to attach to those guys. That's something that you can do, and you can say, "All right, listen, this is what their strengths are." So it gives you tells for the defense that they're playing. I think they're more multifaceted than that. I think Joseph is a little bit more multifaceted in the fact of there's one thing he does really, really well. However, we said that about a certain first round pick in Tremaine Edmonds that he should play outside That's linebacker. Right. What has he proven over the last two years? He is a very solid inside linebacker. So, that being said, in the same defense, in the construct of the same defense, you may say uh, Voshan Joseph is only an edge guy. Well, this is the same defense and the same staff that developed Tremaine Edmonds into a great, uh, who could have been an amazing outside linebacker, to a very solid top 10 middle linebacker in the NFL. So what's to say they can't do that with the other guys that they have on the I guess squad? we just haven't seen it, right? Oh, yeah. No, we have Like, we, no, look at, no. we look at the cornerback position, and you're like, okay, well, that they have no problem taking on, you know, new cornerbacks and, and forcing yeah, them into the system, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But we haven't really seen that because it's been a changing cast of veterans across the defensive line, right? So, and from the linebacker position, they started from scratch, but... Like you're asking, you're asking Edmonds to play out of position, right? But you didn't really ask Milano to play out of position. And the opposite linebacker happened to be Lorenzo Alexander, who wasn't really who was supposed to start. No, I mean, what are you talking about, Ramon Humber? He was the starter. Razor Ramon. <laughs> Razor Ramon Humber. He we was. Can, he he was the starter over Milano. Over though. Milano, Not, right? Okay, right. But I mean, uh, so For earned eight weeks. <laughs> Jesus I know, Lord. I know. That is so think of, think of getting those eight weeks of your life back, right? Oh, God. And in any case, we, we haven't really seen them take somebody like a Voshan Joseph, just as an example, and turn them into an effective coverage linebacker, right? The guys that they have already had that skill set. Milano was already solid in coverage, right? And that was a skill you think Edmonds is solid in coverage, too? I don't think, I don't think they cared at all about Edmonds. 
because you're not asking middle linebackers to cover. You're asking middle linebackers to cover guys going across the middle. It's, it's a, I don't think you're asking the same thing. So We're going back again. We're going back again. What? what? We're going back again. Okay. Okay. What was, the, what was the one knock we had last year? So much on them. They think they can coach up anybody. Anybody, right. Okay. They're 100% convincing. So do you think that Tremaine was just athletic enough to cover and they didn't do anything? Or do you think they coached him into being a good coach? Oh, man. I don't know. Ah, I don't know. Chicken or the egg, man? God damn it, that's a good question. I don't know. If they coached him up to be a good covers linebacker, because I think he's a great covers linebacker. I think he he mans the middle so well for you. Milano, I think he was a good coverage guy coming in. So that's me. I agree. No, I agree with you. So I agree with you. I don't. Was he just athletic enough at the position to do that, or did they coach that into him? Because if it's the first thing where he was just too athletic, I think Joseph is very athletic. I think Johnson's very athletic. I think um, Jackson's very athletic. All that stuff. Or if it's the latter, and they coach that into him, that gives you the, like you said, we haven't seen it yet, but that gives you the promise of. Hey, they got a lot of talent here. So they I think this leads into another episode of the type of player that they draft, right? Because we could, I mean, I think I, <laughs> the points that you just brought up lead me to a different, a completely different episode about what makes the Bills different with who they draft. Hmm.